Okay, so uh, recently I went to CERN, and I went to um, the LHC detector, and I afterwards I I had some time to um, talk to this physicist. So it's so it's sort of an interview. What you're about to watch is sort of an interview with um, Philip Mortholt, uh, a, a, a nuclear physicist. Uh, he, he told me a little bit about supersymmetry. So I just wanted to tell you that what you're watching is a little bit, um, is might, might not be what you might expect, but, but other than that, let's get on with the interview. What's the nice thing about supersymmetry that in my mind is, it stands out among all the other beyond the set of model theories, like extra dimensions or so on. It's particularly interesting. Why? Because it answers multiple things at the same time. And I would say that most other extensions of a certain model, they solve one problem, but not five, like supersymmetry. So the first problem is, um, well, it, 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 because of what I just said, that it connects this internal property of a particle to space-time, it actually opens, opens the way of supergravity, of, of entering gravity into the center model. As you know, it's one of the main uh, problems with the center model, is that gravity is not in there. So it's, there's one of the major flaws that we know exists, it's not part of it. And it, it's worse than that, it's, nobody succeeded to make it part of it in a way that is consistent. But people hope that supersymmetry can do it, although it's not, we're not fully there yet. And that's one. Yes. The other problem is, so we have something called a hierarchy problem or natural force problem. It's why, um, so what that means is that you have, so you, you have a base mass for a particle and then you have corrections to it from all the other particles. And what happens if you not, not, don't have any other particles beyond the center model particles is that you get corrections that become gigantic. And what you need to do is tune the base mass and this correction, so you get the mass that we measured for, for example, the Higgs boson or for the W resistor boson. So it's really, it's like 10 to the 31 minus 10 to the 31 is 100 type of uh, tuning. And we find that unnatural, and we call it hierarchy problem. It, it, it's every, every mathematics. In supersymmetry, you have automatic cancellation of these big uh, corrections. You get a big one and then you get minus the big one because the supersymmetric particles has, creates the same correction but with a minus sign in front of it. And it, it all cancels out and it's pretty, it's beautiful. Second, third thing I was mentioning already, dark matter, big problem. So 85% um, of the matter in the universe is dark matter. Um, you can also, if you include the energy in the universe, you can make it different numbers. Wait, uh, <laughs> if you ever heard this for a moment. Yes, uh, so, uh, so, so, so this is including the energy. This is the energy of the universe. You have this, so you can rescale uh, if you want, yeah. Okay. So, so this is 20, 27, 25% of the matter in the universe is, is unknown, but the ones we know is only 4%. Here they call it 5%. Um, um, <clears throat> So a big problem. And supersymmetry actually predicts the, the, mo the, mo the lightest stable supersymmetric particle is a perfect candidate for dark matter. In the sense that it has all the properties and if you compute how much you expect is exactly what you observe in the universe. So it works great. It doesn't mean that it's true. It's just that it would work great if we would find it. Hmm. So that's a third argument. And then there's more technical arguments uh, that, that um, make things like connect together in a, in a, in a nicer way than, than before. So for example, why the Higgs, um, so you need to break uh, electric symmetry that gives you, the, the Higgs mechanism is, is how you break electric symmetry. And normally you would have it broken in a way that everything would, would be zero. All the masses would be zero, no, there would be nothing, I mean the universe would just be floating particles that wouldn't connect to each other, it would be boring, it's very boring. And, but that's not what happened. And to do that, you need to, to drive one, one mass squared turn negative, which is kind of weird, right? The mass squared negative. 
Uh, and supersymmetry does that automatically because the top core mass is so heavy. It's a lot heavier than all the other cores. Yeah. And so, you see, it actually it connects many things together. And it, for me, it's the most beautiful extension of the center mold that, that gives you a lot of you know, uh, solutions to problems in one go with one elegant symmetry. The problem is we haven't seen anything yet. Whoa. We have not found anything. I've been looking for it for a long time and we have absolutely zero evidence. Now, we do have some uh, reasons to believe that it's not as light as we originally thought, hoped it would be, so it's a little bit heavier. Well, that's not a problem, it could be, you know, could be... Well, so the LHG has a certain mass range, which is, let's say, for supersymmetry, it's typically up to a couple of TeV. But it could be, you know, it could be 10 TeV, and we cannot get there. We typically two, three TeVs where we can get to a mass, uh, to our mass units is uh, giga electron volt or 10 electron volt. Just, uh, we can convert that to more <laughs> familiar uh, units, but that's what we, we call it. Yeah. And uh, it's just a number, right? And um, so we're basically, it could be effective 10, uh, heavier than we think it is. This is why we're looking, um, for a, a future collider to see, you know, we're, we're starting to discuss planning of a future collider, which could go up uh, this factor of 10 in, in mass for supersymmetric particles, but also other, other theories. And what we would do then is, is um, one of the, I mean, there's several, several proposals, so some of them are linear colliders with, with electrons, polytons, but my favorite is a 100 kilometer circular collider which will connect to the LHC so you would want more ring that would actually go under the lake and it would be quite, uh, quite challenging but that would in my opinion it's you don't have a guarantee you don't know what nature will bring but to me it, for at least when it comes to, to supersymmetry you have a, a you know a very good shot of finding it with, with, with that machine well I would say with the LHC we have a, we still have a good shot but you know by far not uh, where, where we, you know, it doesn't have the reach that we would need to really explore the, 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 the phase space of supersymmetry. And when we use uh, conservation of energy and momentum in the collision point, and so what we do is we measure everybody, we sum it all up, and then we have to get back the initial, uh, the initial state, and if, if something is lacking, then we know that there's something invisible going on. Yes. So it could be neutrinos, or neutralinos, or even something else. So then, we have to see what are the properties and, and how, you know, look at distributions, try to figure out exactly what we're seeing. So it's not a direct detection, but it's an indirect derivation, if you want, from not seeing something, from lacking something, that we can still uh, say, okay, this is consistent with neutrinos. Or so we know what we expect for neutrinos. So if it's a lot more than that we expect, it might be neutrinos, but it could be something else. And then to actually, prove that it's really neutrinos and not something else, that will be a long program of work. It's no, it's, it's everything. It, it, it needs uh, all communities to work together uh, because we will have to measure certain properties, angle distributions, whatever, uh, with the detector and we will need uh, theoretical ideas on how to connect this, these measurements to the property of the particle. So we will need both. We will need the mathematical part and then the, the, the experimental part and the thing in between which we call phenomenology, like translating the math into in, into particle predictions. So that's uh, we need all of that.